What's going on, friends? Riding Harley Davidson, no matter what you ride, whether it's a Twin Cam, Evo, Milwaukee 8, or even a Sportster, there is one rule that we all need to be the master of. No matter if your motorcycle is completely stock or if it is heavily modified, we need to be the masters of our oil temperature on our motorcycles. And the best way to control your oil temperature is with an oil cooler. But not all oil coolers are the same or created equal. The oil in your Harley-Davidson is the absolute lifeblood of that engine. Not only does it lubricate the engine, but it also helps cool the engine in addition to air or water if you have wet heads. Oil temperature on your Harley-Davidson is absolutely critical. And as I mentioned, it really doesn't matter if the bike is stock or heavily modified. Now naturally, if it's heavily modified, cams, high compression, ported heads, big bore kits, this is when controlling the oil temperature becomes even more critical. Before we get too far into the video today, guys, please don't forget if you enjoy the video, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, you're probably wondering why didn't all Harley Davidsons just come from the factory with an oil cooler on it? Well, naturally, I'll give you my speculative Harley answer, and that's because, well, they couldn't sell it to you in the catalog if they came from the factory with one. Now, if you have a touring bike or a trike, yeah, it comes with an oil cooler and they have to have one. And of course, all the new Milwaukee 8s, they all have an oil cooler right from the factory. So, okay, add an oil cooler to my bike. Sounds really simple, right? Well, honestly, the installation's not too bad, but picking out the oil cooler that's right for you, that's where things can get a little tricky because there's so many different ones out there. We have thermostatically controlled ones. We have non-thermostatically controlled ones. We have fan-assisted ones, we have single pass, we have duals pass, we have some that has some features that the other ones don't have that it's pretty interesting. I'm going to get into that a little later in the video. And speaking of a little later in the video, Harley-Davidson, they sell oil coolers in the catalog. Well, I'm, I'm a, not really a betting man, but I'm willing to bet that Harley-Davidson doesn't build their own oil coolers. So I'm going to take a stab at who I think builds the oil coolers that we see on the Harley-Davidson motorcycles and the ones you can order out of the Screaming Eagle catalog. And there's a big surprise about that too. So the first oil cooler is really the simplest. This is gonna be your non-thermostatically controlled single pass design. Now we could take the same design and it's a dual pass, which basically means the oil takes two runs through the cooler before it goes back to the engine. But with a non-thermostatically controlled oil cooler, and it doesn't matter if it's single or dual pass, these just basically flow oil through them continuously, no matter what the temperature is. So if you're riding in 20 degree weather, you go out and start your bike up to warm it up a little bit before you take off. You're going to be flowing oil through that oil cooler, and it's going to take your oil a heck of a lot longer to warm up than it would be if you have one that was thermostatically controlled. Now, one that's thermostatically controlled, the oil does not enter the cooler and start flowing through the cooler, generally until the bike reaches about uh, roughly 180 to 195 degrees, then the bypass valve opens up and allows the oil to start flowing through the cooler. So if you're riding in a cold climate and you have a non-thermostatically controlled tube cooler, your oil is going to have a really hard time getting up to temperature. And depending on the ambient air outside, how fast you're traveling with how much air you're putting through that cooler, your oil may not necessarily warm up to where it needs to be to cook off all the moisture. I really, I am a big fan of thermostatically controlled ones because it allows your oil to fully come up to temperature before the bypass valves opens and you start getting the cooling effect that the cooler was intended to do. Now, those are great for getting your oil up to temperature. You're dependent on moving to actually keep that oil cooled down. This is where we could take it a step further with a fan-assisted oil cooler. Now, I love the fan-assisted oil coolers because they're thermostatically controlled. They operate the same way as the non-fan-assisted unit with a thermostat, but with a fan-assisted cooler, they actually allow the oil to reach a little higher temperature before they go to work and the fan kicks on. You're usually looking at about 210 degrees before they come on, and then they usually run and try to maintain that oil temperature at about between 210 and 230. So when it comes to oil coolers, a guy riding in the Nevada desert, an oil cooler that works great on his bike probably doesn't work good for the guy that's living in upstate New York. So if you're down in the Nevada desert, yeah, that's fine. You can have a single or dual pass, non-thermostatically controlled unit 
because you want air constantly moving over that thing the whole time and there's not a lot of traffic in the desert so chances are you're going to be moving you're going to want as much air through that oil cooler as possible now guy in upstate new york cooler temperatures could be riding in the city he's going to be more interested in getting something that's got a thermostat or even better getting one with a fan on it so who makes oil coolers and which one is right for you now when it comes to fan assisted oil coolers Yes, you could get these through the Harley catalog, or you could get these from Jag. Jag has some, and probably when it comes to the fan assisted models, I really like Ultra Cool. Ultra Cool has a really good clean package for their fan assisted oil coolers. Now, if you're looking at a fan assisted oil cooler, definitely expect to be looking at about five to six hundred dollars. That's kind of generally the price range, depending on what you get. If you get single, dual fan, and also depending on how big of an oil cooler you get. Now, the Jag oil coolers, I do like the Jags because of their turbulator design. What that is, is basically the oil, it allows the oil within the cooler to flow into it, and it just kind of allows it to intermingle with each other. It keeps that hot and cooler oil mixed up for a more consistent temperature. Now, with some of the other oil coolers out there, they're basically just a straight-through design where oil flows straight through the tubes, the air passes over the tubes and cools it, and kind of what tends to happen there is you end up with oil at a higher temperature in the center of what's flowing through that tube and that cooler oil is down towards the outside and then with the jag with all that oil being intermixed within the cooler to me this is what they claim and it makes sense to me that you get a much better cooling effect and it's more consistent across all the oil flowing through the cooler and then going back into the engine now of course the same thing with the jag oil coolers I like their look, they're good quality construction, just like Ultra Cool, but with the Jag, they basically just have the fan stuck on the back and then you have to kind of come up with some kind of cover if you'd like, especially if you've got a side mounted oil cooler. But other than that, good quality product. That's the only thing that kind of gets me about them is just the way they mount their fans. Now, if you're really on a tight budget, there are some universal oil coolers out there they're non-thermostatically controlled. They just basically flow oil through them and put that oil out in the wind. Milwaukee Twins has one for about 120 bucks, but like I say, it is universal. You are going to have to come up with your own plumbing, your own oil filter adapter, or get a creative way to hook it up to your oil lines. Now, one of the most interesting oil coolers I've seen out there is actually the Oil Bud Cooler. They're about $625, but they take a very different approach. These are large oil coolers. They have a lot of surface area, but they're actually designed to mount underneath the motorcycle. They claim them to be extremely tough and durable, but under the bike, and I, I don't know about that, but it is a lot of surface area, and you do get a lot of airflow under there, but if you've ever crawled underneath your motorcycle or had it up on a lift and taken a look under at the frame at what all is under there, it ain't pretty. But I'm sure it works really good if you just keep it clean. I haven't really heard anything bad about them other than just make sure you keep them clean. But it is a lot of surface area, and the more oil you can put through that, that's more air over the oil, and you're going to get a better cooling effect. So guys, if you're looking at oil coolers, you really need to ask yourself, what type of environment do I ride in? If you're in a hot, open environment, and you really have no winter to speak of, then a just straight either single or dual row oil cooler with a no thermostat that's going to run all through it constantly that's perfect for you but if you live out somewhere where you have a varied riding style and places to ride maybe a thermostat's better for you if you've got winter to speak of go ahead and get one with a thermostat and then for sure if you're in an area in an urban area with a heavy concentration of traffic long stop lights go ahead and pop for the one that's actually got the fan assist on it but bear in mind, you're looking at spending between $400 and roughly $700, depending on what oil cooler you get and what setup you want to go with. Now, I did say I would take a stab at who makes Harley-Davidson's oil coolers. It's really kind of funny. You look at the oil coolers that they're offering in the, in the Harley-Davidson catalog, look at the size of them, look at what they say about them. It's really, really, really makes you think that's a Jag oil cooler. So I'm going to say Jag actually makes the coolers to Harley Davidson. And now here is the interesting part about the oil coolers from Harley Davidson. If they're Jag, which let's assume they're Jag for a second, they're actually cheaper buying them from Harley Davidson than roughly what you can get on the aftermarket by about 20 to 25 dollars. Now that very rarely happens where a part from Harley Davidson is actually cheaper than some of the aftermarket stuff. 
So guys, when it comes to oil coolers, even your stock motorcycle needs them. And even if you've got a big board, high compression monster sitting in your garage, you can even run dual oil coolers if you need to. You can buy two of them Jag 10 row oil coolers and mount them on each side of your bike if you have that big of a cooling need. But anyhow guys, if you're looking for oil coolers, just pay attention to your riding environment and make sure you buy the one that you're absolutely going to need. Don't spend the extra money if you don't need it. But then again, there's nothing wrong with going all out getting a fan assisted cooler. But anyhow guys, you get the right oil cooler on your bike and you will be the master of the oil temperature rule on Harley Davidson motorcycles. But anyhow guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Please don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But until next week, guys, I want to thank you all for watching. You guys stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge the cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.